ever wish you could live your last week all over again? Well, my name's Frank B. Parker, and I do it all the time. I work for a secret government project experimenting in time travel. When things really get screwed up, I'm the guinea pig they send back to take care of it. Catch is, you can only go back seven days. I just had that stupid dream again last night, that's all. Hanson Island? Yeah. It's so vivid, it makes me feel like I never left. I was like a caged animal in that place. When you think about it, it's not too much different here. Except the cage is now the sphere instead of the asylum. Okay, we need to start getting serious about working through these issues of yours. When symptoms of this kind of anxiety start manifesting themselves physically, something is very wrong. You need to talk to a staff psychiatrist. No way. We've tried that crap before. It never works. For several weeks now, he's been suffering from horrible nightmares and extreme anxiety. It seems to stem from his experiences at Hanson Island. We all know that his time there deeply affected him, but are you saying it's made him unfit for duty? Yes, and I think my monthly recommendation to the panel should reflect that. He needs therapy, Bradley, so that he can really start dealing with what happened to him in that place. You're going to do very well, David. Yeah, it's the right time to start anew. I feel the, the stars are in my favor. Well, just to be sure, I'd like you to have a copy of this new chart I made for you. I think you'll find life more manageable when you consult the Celestia daily. You know, my head used to be filled with chaos, and, and now it's much better ordered because of you and all you taught me. I mean, from another inmate? Wow. So, oh, thank you. Good luck. So, now that you're out of the joint, how do you feel? As long as I follow the Celestia, I feel in control. <laughs> That's cool. Well, what are you going to do with yourself now? Not my decision to make, but it's up there.
to see this concert for months. <laughs> I hear the Seven Sisters are bomb and great in concert. It'll be the best night of my life. <laughs> permanently blinded 14,000 concert goers, most of them teenagers. FBI spokesman Bill Franks said the Bureau was still pursuing all leads. Thousands of kids dead. So, intel strong enough for go yet? Okay. The laser generated a 10 second burst, enough to boil retinal nerves and fluids in anyone's eyes. The victims suffer permanent blindness. In the most severe cases, the eyes can literally explode. My God. Only a sick, twisted mind would commit that kind of terrorism on a bunch of kids. The weapon was left at the stadium. Now, we've determined that the only work in this country involving this type of laser was at the Army Special Weapons Research Group. Obviously, only a handful of scientists could possibly have had access. And most of them checked out, except for one. David Harold. He was released from your old alma mater ten days ago after a two-year stay. Hanson Island? Yep. Seems that institution's M.O. is letting nut jobs out early. Shut up, Ramsey. Where's Harold now? He's dropped off the radar since the attack. Well, anything else? Well, a few days before the event, Harold proclaimed that he had been given a mission by the stars. Unfortunately, that is all we have. Great, I'll break out my tarot cards and we'll finally get to the bottom of this. Let's do it. You'll arrive three days before the concert. We're going to set you down just outside Raleigh, North Carolina, near the trailer park where Harold lives. We've got to find him and bring him into custody immediately. Failing that, we'll issue an APB. It's cake. Good luck, Frank. Thank you, sir. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you sure you're up for this? Look, old guy. 14,000 kids, not much older than my son, were blinded. I'm up to preventing that any good. Just to uh, let the monkey do his job, okay? I'm fine. But hey, thanks for the concern. Launch team members clear to 61. Launch team members clear to 61. Decoupling access stabilizer. Increasing radiation. Zero, 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 three. Lock and blink. Reactor to 80%. Five. Reactor to 90%. Four, three, two, one. 100%. Engage. South tonight. Okay, okay. Now you take care of the place for me. Sure. <laughs> well, I, I just hope my chart covers this. That changes everything. North, 320 degrees. Ohio. 
Sergeant Lai here. How may I direct your call? Conundrum. Hold on, Conundrum. Sir, I have Conundrum on the line. Frank? Hey, Bradley. I'm in North Carolina. This one should be easy. In three days, some nut from Hanson Island is gonna unleash a laser that will blind thousands of kids at a rock concert in Atlanta. I'm on my way to get him. <laughs> Remember the boy? Rocky. <laughs> You're not David Harold. Oh no. Hmm. Sorry about that. I, uh, you, uh, wouldn't have to know where I, uh, could find him, would you? All I know is he saw some light in the sky, checked his chart thingy, doodled some stuff on his pad, then took off. To Atlanta. No. At first he was going south, maybe, maybe Atlanta. And I didn't say. What do you mean, at first? See, that was kind of strange. He was on his way out the door when all of a sudden he saw something else in the sky. Some meteor. And all of a sudden he had to go to Ohio. Ohio? Well, did he say where specifically? No, just that he was going to Ohio. Well, that explained. Yeah. Yeah. You always been uh, an astrology nut? Ever since you got back from... Anson Island? Yeah. Yeah, yeah now it never makes a move without consulting that stuff. He had some guru back there. Did he mention the name of this guru? No. Just that this dude... Did his reading. Taught him all about it. Let me take this. Thanks very much for your time. Well, it's not going to be as easy as I thought. Now he's heading to Ohio. You said Atlanta when you made the conundrum call. Are you second-guessing your own intel? I'm afraid so. Something's changed. You see, uh, Harold's an astrology freak. He, uh... He uses it to guide his daily life. I think he saw the sphere re-entry, mistook it for an astrological event, and went somewhere else. I'll have Ramsey issue an APB. Good. And after you've done that, I need you to go to Ohio. Be on standby until I get some more details. Okay, I'll get to Wright Patterson. I'll put together a Delta team. Good. Yeah, listen. Harold has a guru in astrology. Any idea who he is? I don't know who he is, but I do know where he is. I'm gonna need you to make a few calls for me, Bradley. Sure. Who to? Who's mommy in this relationship, huh? Okay. You may have been king around here three years ago, Parker. Things are different now. Yeah, try and show the proper respect this time. You know, maybe you guys aren't getting enough fiber in the diet or something. Gee, thanks, fellas. I uh, never would have found this seat without your help. Appreciate it. You guys, you got working for you there. Frank Parker. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too, Doc. You uh, would mind if I slip out of this and do something a little more comfortable now, would you? I'm 
I must admit. I'm surprised. Why? Because I uh, said I'd never come back. Sorry to disappoint you, Doc. When Dr. Talmadge told me that you were the agent he was sending, I couldn't believe my ears. Well, I owe it largely to you. You helped me when I was here, Doc. You really did. So, what's this mission you've been sent on? Oh, it's a need-to-know basis only. Of course. Yeah. Well, as you collect your intel, I'll make sure that you get it to Bradley. You'll be all right, Frank. I'm here for you, as always. Yeah, thanks, Doc. I appreciate it. But I'm fine. He'll behave. Take him back to the ward. I missed you guys. I'm, I'm done with that. I don't need that anymore. Isn't that right, Doc? Not yet. We're trying a different angle. Excuse me, sir. Just hang on a minute. Parker's back in Hanson Island? Yes, it was his suggestion. He's there as an inmate. Posing as one, yes. It's part of his investigation into the terrorist event that occurred in the previous timeline. He shouldn't be there, sir, with the anxiety he's been exhibiting. It's far too risky. That place could send him right over the edge. Frank's tough, Olga, and he knows he's not stuck there this time. Well, why him? Why not someone else? Anyone else? This is exposing him to his worst nightmare, and his mental condition is not optimal. I, I've gone on record with this, sir. Why don't you give it back to him? George Azerot? Huh. I remember him. <laughs> George, George, George. Ah, uh, Mr. Parker. Come in. I was hoping we'd get a chance to chat. Please, sit down. On the floor, Mr. Parker, on the floor. So, how have you been? Well, <clears throat> a man who spends time in Hanson Island doesn't always know what to do with three years of freedom. So why are you still here? I want to stay. I suppose that means I'm ill enough to have to stay. It'll be nice to have our conversations again, Mr. Parker. My mind has dulled in your absence. Well, looks like you've had plenty to keep busy with. Ah, oh, the mystical arts, yes, sir. I found a control to life that makes living each day easier. How'd you get lucky enough to find that? Well, as you may remember, I was an astrophysicist at NASA. While there, I defined the world in terms of equations, numbers. It looked fascinating on paper. But let me guess, you found a new meaning. Yes, sir. Gradually, in the course of my research, I became one with the clarity of space. I looked up into the heavens and was enlightened as to the innate plan of the universe. And, uh, you create people's charts around here? Create? No, no, no. I decipher the individual orders based on the celestial. I merely interpret the universe's plan. Hey, how about that meteor show the other night? That's almost one lot from that. Oh, Pleiades, yes. Yes, indeed. What if there were a second event? You know, one that you couldn't predict. Ah, supper. I'm flattered by your interest, Mr. Parker, but you can't just jump into something as complex as this. My teachings take time.
Our hermetic cosmos is in imbalance. I can feel it. But I am here to put us all back on the proper celestial course. I think Azeroth's definitely Harold's puppeteer. He's got this whole place under his spell. Did he give you anything about Harold? Not yet, but I'm working on it. Frank, do you know Azeroth's recent history? Well, apart from his high IQ, no. Not really. Why? He's become extremely dangerous, capable of fits of savage violence. Oh, you like this. In the last three years, he's developed a penchant for biting people's throats out. He killed an inmate that way. Oh, great. Sounds like fun. Anyway, did you organize that uh, sphere cover-up story for me? Yeah, the usual stuff. I took care of it myself. You gonna see it tonight? Yeah, six o'clock news. Anyway, I gotta go. I uh, gotta give the good doctor her office back. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll call you. Where's your chart, Spangler? I can't read it. Don't make any sense. You can learn. I'm starting to think it's all stupid, all right? What's the trouble? Mr. Spangler is trying not to be balanced. Is that true, Mr. Spangler? You seem to understand that you were part of the cosmos earlier. What changed your mind? It's all crap, man. Saturn ain't helping me live my life. If you're going to take that attitude, Mr. Spangler, nothing is going to help you live your life. It's your choice. Hey, George. You gotta relax, man. Span was just a little slow, that's all. You'll get it. Get out of line, you have nothing to be scared of. Mm. Spangler was asking for it. Go ahead, Parker. You remember the drill. For those of you who observe the celestial event over North Carolina, we have an explanation. Some eyewitnesses described the fantastic light show two nights ago as a spinning ball like UFO. While others thought it might have been falling debris from a NASA satellite. Yeah. Dr. John Wilkes of NASA's Space Satellite Control <laughs> offered the truth behind the event. Um, what the people of Raleigh saw was, uh, <clears throat> was a small, unexpected meteor that uh, burned up in the Earth's atmosphere as it entered. Um, we at NASA were monitoring this meteor's trajectory, and uh, we were confident that the meteor was small enough that it would not threaten any living creatures of this planet. The appearance of the surprise meteorite was an added bonus to stargazers in Raleigh who were already watching the Pleiades meteor shower which had just begun its peak when the unrelated meteor put on its own show. Meteor change all your readings? The universe is talking to us all the time, Mr. Parker. Unfortunately, we sometimes act before it's done speaking. Let me ask you something. If someone had a, a chart like this, what would a change like that tell them to do? Well, Pleiades is prominent, but the unexpected event indicates a shift in conjunction to Vulpecula, which... Where did you get this? David Harold, he's a, an old friend of mine. Then of yours now, I think about it. You've seen David recently? Yeah, he was showing me uh, how your theories work. You learn my theories in due course, Mr. Parker. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm busy. Short thing, George. <clears throat> We are jamming tonight, so with the volume crank and the rhythm electric, keep it right here at WPED, where we raise the dead in Central Ohio. Now here's the latest from DJ and Little Fox, who are bringing down the house tonight in Cleveland. Sugar and spice and everything nice. All the kind of thing. Hey, 
you, Doc. Uh, sorry to bug you, but uh, I need to call Bradley again. And Mr. Parker, I apologize, but something urgent has come up that I need to attend to immediately. Well, it should only take a minute. We'll arrange for you to call Bradley shortly. Well, uh... Take him back to the ward. We'll continue this later. Is there a problem with it? Ooh, boy, is it lovely. Ugh. Randomness can be detrimental to proper alignment, Doctor. You know that. Look at your chart! He's the end of your world. It was always there, Doctor. If only you had consulted your stars before you put us all in jeopardy. I, I'm sorry. I, I know we must be dealt with. I've already taken that liberty. Batter up. Oh. <laughs> Come on, fellas, can we talk about this over a beer or something, huh? <laughs> astrological reading. You told me some very surprising things. Yes. You don't have a friend in the world, Mr. Parker. Not anymore. Parker has been under your care for... Two years. He must have been a handful. He was for me. Um, I realize he's on assignment. But, um, coming back to Hanson Island... You thought it would be traumatic for him? Exactly. As did, uh, Dr. Talmadge. He seems to be doing very well. But caution is a good idea, given the circumstances. Being in such a harsh environment as this can be traumatic for a patient and non-patient alike. If there's anything else I can do for you, let me know. I care about Frank, too. Thank you, Doctor. Take her to see Mr. Parker. deal of harm to my destiny. Your only destiny is to sit in this hell hole for the rest of your life. Well, that would be very unfortunate, Mr. Parker. Then my important work could not continue. What? Keeping control of the ward? No, no, much more than that. You see, there have been several David Heralds released from this institution, all with their own mission to wreak havoc. It's all an attempt to write a balance in this universe that's decaying. Oh, oh, I get it. So you're the good guy here. Yes, Mr. Burger. And no. You see, there's too much good in this world for it to be in proper alignment. And if good can only be defined by an equal pull of evil, then yes, I define an awful lot of good. Think of it this way. I am the polar south, you are the polar north. I can't allow your pull to be greater than mine. George, you brought your wife and kids. How nice. Uh, uh, what, no swab? You've been getting into things you don't fully understand. But I'll teach you now. You'll understand everything completely. Mr. Parker, we're not going to fuss with anesthesia and muscle relaxants. 
It ruins the appreciation for the art of electroshock therapy. And 500 volts is worth appreciating. We wouldn't think of you enjoying this all by yourself. Hey, Olga. Sorry. Olga? Let her go. Now, this isn't going to hurt a bit, Doctor. I just love saying that. I said let her go, you son of a bitch. No! Mr. Parker, you're here to save me. I've tried, Olga. I really have. How can anyone save a distant, dispassionate, cold-hearted person like you? I'm not cold-hearted, I'm just... I was just scared. I didn't think I'd go old alone. I didn't think I'd grow old Don't worry, Mr. Parker, this won't hurt a bit. like this. You, Olga. I hold on tight to a picture of you. Frank. Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, I'm so worried about you. Oh, I came here because I... I want 
wanted to save you this time. I know. I know. I know I gotta find Harold. Where there's a whole bunch of kids that I'll never see again. Take care of me when I need you most. I'll never push you away again. Get out of here, I promise you that. Any word from them? No, they should have checked in hours ago. The clock is still ticking. What are we going to do? Get me Dr. Matisse. We need to find out what the hell's going on there. For this. My dad gave me a loan. I gotta paint the garage's payback, but it's gonna be worth it. This is gonna be such a cool night. Yeah. We need to give young David the freedom to play his part in restoring the universal alignment. And unfortunately, the NSA agents will be here soon. Even if the worst happens, at least Harold is already in Atlanta. Not anymore. The meteor in Volpecula pointed him to Cleveland. Then he'll accomplish that mission. Yes, but we still need to deal with the unbelievers. I understand. Those two need to forget everything they've seen here. A thousand volts should do it. more specific, Frank. Cleveland's a big place. It's going to be a big event with a lot of people. Maybe a concert, like in the last time. Parker, do you have any idea what's happening in Cleveland tonight? There's a ball game, three rock concerts, a symphony orchestra, and an Anthony Robbins convention. I don't know. Cancel all of them, then. That's next to impossible. Most of the events have already started. Okay. Get Donovan and his team choppered over to Cleveland as fast as you can. Have them stay in the air and standing by. I'll get that location as soon as I can. We're on it, Frank. the stars led me. George, I forgot to ask you, where exactly in Cleveland is Harold going to attack? You disappoint me, Mr. Parker. George, I'm not gonna ask you again. Where's Harold gonna strike? You read his chart? Uh, remember your Greek and Latin? What, Pleiades? <laughs> no. Uh, Vulpecula. <laughs> Vulpecula is, uh, Latin for little fox. Uh, DJ and little fox? I like those guys. My <laughs> goodness, Mr. Parker. Slightly. Too late! Bradley. 
recently. It's at the DJ and Little Fox concert in Cleveland. They're playing at the Gund Arena right now. Harold's there setting up his little light show. Have Donovan take his ass out. With pleasure. Olga! Frank! It's over. We're going home. Don't even think about it. Well, Star said nothing to your comments. You've been battling your demons for a long time. I think I only now realize what mine are and what my worst fears are. Oh, yeah? What are they? I saw myself in the future. I, uh... I'd made a terrible mistake when I was younger, and I was sad. What kind of mistake? Maybe someday I'll tell you. Tell me now. I don't think so, Mr. Parker. You'll only use it for more ammunition. Ammunition? For what? Now I really gotta know. Olga! Oh,